Hello, hello, everyone. It is Melissa Santana, your co-host of the Ms. Texas Show. Um, as always, super excited to bring you another show, another guest, and another great story. And, you know, just be able to learn as much as we can from others and, you know, their impact and everything that they do. Today, we are going to have the wonderful guest. Um, her name is Carly, but she's also known as Coco because she's part of a mother-daughter duo known as Coffee and Coco. She is only 14 years old. And at the age of 14, she is a survivor of child abuse, but she literally is one of the best and youngest advocates I know who literally helps others, interviews others, you know, supports others and do the, does all these wonderful things, but is also still a kid. So like loves swinging, loves doing all these other great things as well. So you're going to get to learn um, from her, you know, hear from her, learn about her story and all the great work she does and how she continues to help others. So, you know, let's uh, tune in and I hope you enjoy it. The Ms. Texas Show is a voice of hope for victims, survivors, advocates, and community leaders against gender-based violence to share their stories and resources. We began showcasing life in Texas. Today we are impacting lives not only in Texas, but also around the world. Under our segment, Military Time, we run this segment in partnership with the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We invite military and veterans who have overcome traumatic events to share their experiences during and after their military service. Under our beauty segment, we invite fellow pageant winners and contestants, artists, musicians, actors, models, and dancers, and last but not least, our survivor leaders from family violence, sex trafficking, sexual assault, stalking, and other traumatic events who are ambassadors for these causes to share their lives and the impact they have made. To become a guest on our show, email us at msusatexas at gmail.com. If you would like to support victims and survivors of gender-based violence, make a tax-deductible donation to Hope Picks Global at www.hopeyxglobal.org. Um, I am a survivor of sexual abuse, sexual, physical, emotional, the whole shebang. And uh, my perpetrator has not been in jail yet, but... I have kind of come to terms with the fact that he may never go, which is sad, but the truth with most stories. Um, but I'm 14. I have a great life now. Um, I honestly am kind of glad I went through what I went through because I wouldn't be here telling others that they should speak up and that it may be hard at first, but there's always a brighter side to all this and yeah <laughs> couldn't hit the button at first yay awesome well no and i appreciate that and incredible to hear that at 14 like at 14 i feel like other people are just trying to figure out their hobbies who they are mm -hmm. like what to do tomorrow like i don't know that they're thinking <laughs> about the incredible impact they can have on communities people at large i just think that's super duper inspiring but with that being said i would also love so since you said that like as a 14 year old like what are some of your like interest you know like what are some of the things you do like what makes up you know who you are like the things you think about like what are the things that preoccupy your mind and your time as a 14 year old um, well, I, like most, or hopefully most, I like hanging out with my friends. I like going outside, breathing the air to say I've made it another day somehow. Um, I like swinging. I like reading books. I like silence, but I also like loud. It just depends on the mood. Um, I like going on car rides with my mom and listening to music and just jamming out. And then having emotional conversations. I love being real and honest, but I also like goofing around. So, <laughs> absolutely, that sounds like all the the greatest things to be able to be doing. Um, and I love that. I love that you have that, that you do that, um, and all of that. And so, and so, with that being said, I think that it is. I think you touched on some incredible things, though. So, unfortunately, I definitely think that. Nobody, of course, deserves to have gone through what you went through, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so, and I love that you advocate for others and you, know, you also agree that that shouldn't be the case, but you also can see the positive side of it because yeah. you've been able to turn that into, you know, a purposeful life. You're able to help others and leave this positive impact. But with that being said, like, 
what um i want to start off with that first part so the fact that your perpetrator i'm wondering why do you feel that they might not be you know able to get persecuted in that way like what's you know leading you to say that but also like what advice do you have for others who might be in a similar situation where they find them they find that maybe their perpetrators might also not get the proper punishment that they hope they could get mm -hmm. Um, well, at first, uh, I've learned the statistics of the actual pers or perpetrators being persecuted and sent to jail. It does happen, but it there's not really a good chance. And I think it's been around seven years, five years, somewhere in between there, um, since I first spoke out. And it's been five years, and I've been waiting and waiting and nothing has happened. So as time goes on, your hope kind of diminishes and you kind of like wonder why would I even speak out if I didn't, if, if I, could I could just keep it in and didn't have to go through all of this if there's no outcome I want. But the truth is, I even now I would not want to go back and uh, change anything I've done with my life because the healing brought me so much joy. It made me see the bright side of things. It made me proud of myself and able to walk another day. It's, able, it's made me able to understand others. It's made me be emotional and, and actually know what I'm feeling. And it's been the best thing of my life. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I'm glad you said that because that is something. So like I used to work at the rape crisis center and unfortunately I came across the same. I think it was, it actually became one of the reasons why I had to go because honestly I couldn't take seeing so many people with, you know, all the evidence and just all the reason to be persecuted. Like I just felt like they just deserve so much more than what the justice system unfortunately could provide for them. Mm -hmm. And I just felt that it was very unfair. But even when we went into it, knowing that our justice system is the way it is, that's a lot of what I would tell them too. Like I would say things like, you know, this may not bring you the closure that, you know, you want, you may not get the outcome that you're seeking. Like, let's talk through that because unfortunately that is the reality that we're facing. And so like, what else can we make sure is good for you to make sure you're still going to be good at the end of the day? Um, and that this isn't, you know, what you're resting your healing on or like your peace on. So I love that. Again, that's why I'm like, I can't believe I'm talking to a 14 year old, but you know, for you to like, like also understand that, you know, for you to live by that. Um, I think it is definitely incredible, but you said another powerful thing, which is that it's been about seven years total since you said something. Unfortunately, I don't know if that means that it began seven years ago. Unfortunately, I know that that might not be the case, but I just want to ask, but, um, you know, there's that. And so two parts I would say is that one, when did it begin for you? But also when did you find the courage to say something or like, how did you find the courage? I would say. Mm -hmm. Well, it began at the age of three, around 11, 10 years ago, or 12. I'm not really good with math on the top of my head. Um, but I think I'm pretty sure I spoke out in the third grade, which would make me around seven, eight, nine, somewhere in that age rate, age range. So, yeah. Okay. And, and when, you, and like, what do you think? unfortunately was leading for you not to say something both prior to that because I know there's a lot of other survivors who feel the same way you know it takes them a while and for you you're describing like you said I agree math is not my strongest subject either but what I heard was three to seven so that was about four years that you at least carried it with you so like was there any particular reason for that was it maybe because you didn't have the words like you know what I mean what do you think was unfortunately withholding you from doing that or stopping you um, well, it was, uh, of course, the threats, the threats uh, being thrown into a fire pit, being left out in the open by myself, left alone, that no one would care if I told anyone, I'm just making it up, it's all inside my head, your mom will never believe you, it's, no one is ever going to believe you, right. and I <laughs> It was horrible to live with, but um, I think the only reason I spoke is because of my mom, because she kept proving him wrong. Like, I'm still here with you, and it just kind of broke down the wall bits by bits, so...
See, that's why I think it's incredible too that we can have anyone in our lives that provide some kind of support like that. And that's why I think sometimes we don't realize how vital that is. And it wasn't even necessarily in any particular way. I mean, because your mother wasn't aware that that was taking place. So it's not like she knew to show you love or support in a particular way. She was just doing what she normally does. And thankfully it helped, you know, to give you what you needed and like that curse. So like, I definitely appreciate that, but I definitely think that that is major. With some people, it is other things. Like it's, it's other tactics that are used you know maybe they have certain information on the person you know maybe they have access to some of those person like personal you know family members or whatever it may be but I that that threat thing I think we sometimes I just don't understand I don't know if society understands how important that is and then like how much of a manipulative tool it is and how effective of a tool it is so like some these threats sometimes are happening without even having to touch the person I mean unfortunately in your case there was already harm that was inflicted. It was just followed up with threats, which, you know, like just compounded it and made it even worse. But I think too, sometimes threats are made without even, you know, like having to touch the person. Like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do this to someone. Like, they don't even have to, you know, do anything in front of you per se. It's just kind of like, just by saying it, like there's just a lot of things. And since we know this person is capable of inflicting harm, we're not gonna go against what that person says. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna go, you know, I'm not gonna think that they're not gonna be a person capable of doing it because they already been capable of other things like in a lot worse so I think like unfor it's unfortunate that that did occur but I think you're shedding light on you know a big issue here that that's what a lot of perpetrators use is those kind of tools and it was un definitely un very unfortunately effective for it to have taken on that many years I'm glad you had your support system and you mm -hmm. finally were able to but the fact that it took you like a couple years it just means that's how much of a stronghold unfortunately was you know taking place on you but I'm glad that like, you were able to break free from that mm -hmm. And my perpetrator was, especially because he was older with older than me. Right. I trusted him. Absolutely. Um, he he was some he was in some kind of police force. Mm. He worked with dogs, attacked dogs, and trained them to attack, to smell up bombs. And honestly, I remember one. I remember when my mom like saw signs that something was happening and something was wrong and she got us out but being the good mom she is she's like I still want them to have access to this person yeah. so she her and the court and everyone else um without the kids knowing we had to go back and forth every other weekend to see this person and it just made the threat still possible like I could go one weekend and not come back. If I told, and there was one point where two of my siblings were staying with my mom and they were not, they were refused to go back. And then my, and then the perpetrator got full custody of my older brother. So then it was just me going back and forth. And so I wasn't safe either way. There was no one, because me and my brother, my older brother used to go back and forth and I, we could kind of lean on each other. We could kind of be with each other. We knew that we knew the experiences the other experienced. But then as soon as he went and stayed with the perpetrator, I felt alone again for the millionth time in my life at the age of seven, somewhere around there. Right. It was horrible. No, I definitely agree. And I feel like that's, that's what's unfortunate too, is like all of those, you know, uh, steps that are, you know, taking place, unfortunately, to make it even worse for, you know, something like that to be happening. So yeah, I definitely, and I definitely appreciate, by the way, that you're, you know, sharing with us today, you know what I mean? And, you know, finding us even worthy to have this platform and have this conversation, but that is incredible. Like, and it's just un so unfortunate for you to even have to have, you know, witnessed all that, to see all of that. And just a re-traumatization re is what I'll call it. I don't even know if that's a word, but I know at least I wanted to say at least re-traumatizing yeah. because that's what's unfortunate is that like, it's already enough when you go through it, you know, one time, but for you to be reminded of it, for you to then, you know, feel those feelings again. And like, definitely, like you said, not only the alone, but just the helplessness. Because unfortunately, I feel like that's usually what perpetrators thrive off of is trying to make you feel alone, trying to strip you of any like support that you have and think that actually the only support you're getting is from me. So like, 
like, why don't you go ahead and stay here? Because nobody mm-hmm. else is going to, you know, take care of you. And I'm so glad that you had someone, like you said that, like your mother, who was able to help you realize that's actually a lie. But that's unfortunately what happens is that they, they are spreading lies, absolutely, but they make them very believable, like to the point where you believe the lies that they spread, for sure. So like, and it's what, again, what's benefits them. So I definitely think that it's super unfortunate that they use that but again it's just a powerful tool that they use but I also agree that that is unfortunate too that it affected your family in that way so you know I'm definitely hearing like some siblings and it just it just it's definitely I want to say for lack of a better word it sucks <laughs> that they you know got moved in that way you know what I mean and for you to then have to in turn feel that you know feel those feelings like of course it just is unfortunate for anyone but definitely especially in your case do you have a lot so like what's like the total is there like a whole bunch of siblings you have is it just a few how many siblings do you have the ones that I know I don't want to give too much information without their permission but I know three there's four of us all together that I know were abused um three of them counting me um are with my mom and one of them is with the perpetrator still Right. Um, and then I have a younger sibling who has a different dad. Um, she's amazing, but can get on my nerves. <laughs> and I have three other step siblings who kind of step siblings. It just depends on how you look at it. So they family. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of what I meant. So thank you for, you know, keeping yeah. that intimacy. Yeah. Cause I definitely don't need names, anything like that. I was kind of wondering that, like really just like the relationship, like kind of like what you said, like, mm-hmm. you know, how has that, you know, been with the other siblings and all that? And are you kind of like more on the older side then? Or are you like more on the younger? Like where are you at? Um, I am 14. And then my, we have, I have twin siblings. Oh, wow. Um, and they're like, I think they're 12 or 13. I can never keep track. And then my younger sibling is five. So that's where the age gap is. Okay. And it's like us three. And then my older brother is like four or five years older than me. And then it's it's just, yeah. Yeah. So kind of close, but like there's also some gaps in it, like you said, definitely. Wow. Okay. And then, so, and with that, like, I think it's been amazing that I feel like you've been able to turn, you know, like I said, what happens to you into something positive, you know, Mm -hmm. being able to help others, because I definitely think it's nothing but inspirational. You know what I mean? The work that you're doing and like what it is. But I think too, like, do you see that same influence like with your siblings? Do you think like it's been helpful for them to see you? Like, is it also, can it be triggering? Like, how have you been able to navigate that? Like with them? I think I've been able to, for me, I've been able to see my siblings better and understand it from their point of view, hearing so many of other people's stories and how they experience the same thing my siblings have. Just like if I see myself in someone else, I can help myself better. And I just kind of help guide them along in the way I hope is helpful. And so far it has most of the time been helpful, but I usually I guess act like this I usually try and bring people up so it's not really a a new thing to them so they're kind of used to me being all like hyper and go-getter but then like kind of like tired at some points they're used to it all so (laughs) it's fun well see and I'm glad I mean they're already comfortable so Mm -hmm. like they know and I guess that's what was it was super like intriguing to me that's actually what brought up the sibling question is that I think it's awesome that you do this work but I was like are, did none of them have interest in also doing similar things or they're kind of like no you go ahead Coco <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they they let me be myself most of the time nice. they try not to interfere but they're also my siblings so right. it's kind of their job to interfere <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> as they should right well wow and so and get so like with your mom so I wanted to um the other thing I want to ask like with that so what was that like though because it sounds like in your case it was something positive like you were able to go to her and apparently she believed you which was the big thing and so like mm-hmm. we know that that's often a piece of advice that we share with others who want to support survivors what's one of the main things you can do believe them <laughs> honestly and honestly oh, yeah. it seems really profound but it's like no seriously because I don't think people understand that sometimes we do so many things to not do that and honestly think without even trying right because even if we do something like 
well, are you sure that happened or whatever? We're not realizing that in that moment, that's where the re-traumatization can happen, right? And it's mm-hmm. like what you said about those feelings of feeling alone. It, it could easily make them go right back to that place by not just doing that. So what was it like for you, you know, opening up to someone? And of course, in this case, it was your mother and just like actually having that, like, what was that like? You know what I mean? To have that in like, you know, to actually have that support in that moment. Yeah, it was something very unexpected. I wasn't expecting to... I kind of went out on a limb. I'm like, it's now or never. Uh, This is the only time I'm going to feel brave about this. And then I kind of slipped a little, kind of like, I've been giving hints my whole life. Hopefully this is a bigger hint you can finally, like, realize. And she realized it. And I was like, okay, so what happens now? I'm not sure what happens now. Um, I was so scared. And then when she took me to counseling and gave me the space and time I needed to help me, it just made that trust that I felt was broken, or it was broken, it made it become even tighter than I thought it could ever. Wow. See, and I think that's always what we fear is that actually will bring us, you know, further apart, you know, like if we admit Mm -hmm. certain things or really, I think what I've often heard and what I've thought of myself is that like people look at me differently, you know what I mean? And so I don't want to admit this. Like, I don't want you to then look at me only in that kind of lens and not see me Mm -hmm. for, you know, who I am and like, or see me broken or anything like that. So for that, just, I think super incredible to hear that when you did open up, it actually brought you together stronger. Like that's just, Mm -hmm. that's the dream, honestly, but I also think it's just wonderful, you know, that you were able to have that and that that's what we hope with anyone. But also I think that's why I really hope that anybody like, you know, watching, listening is understand that, you know, as scared as you might be, I mean, there is a lot of benefit that you can get. You know what I mean? I know that it can be, in, it's, it's an incredible, it's, it's a big risk because it does take a lot of courage. So I would never want to mm-hmm. discount that if, you know, others are not feeling that same sense of support or they're thinking, well, I don't know who I can turn to because honestly, I don't feel the same way. That's understood. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. all, that's very much understood understood but we would hate for you to also be robbing yourself of the opportunity to get healing like in your case because mm-hmm. you were just too scared you know to say something or for fear of judgment or whatever um and then so you start to say it so you mentioned counseling and like some other things i've helped and i love that when you introduce yourself you're like i live such a you know better life now like that ain't me you know what i mean it was like a big like mm-hmm. clearly this does not define me all of that you know it's, it's it is super evident you definitely have this like light that shines mm-hmm. and you are super like bright and bubbly all the things that your siblings <laughs> would say about you I hate people looking at me with pity, like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's the worst thing. It's worse. (laughs) It is almost as worse as the trauma. Because it's like, oh, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I'm like, but if you keep bringing it up, it's going to be worse kind of thing. (laughs) Like, yes, it happened to me. There may be some times where you have to be understanding, but mostly it can kind of forget about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and then, and, and agreed, because I just feel like you're multifaceted. There's a lot of sides to you, and it, you don't have to be defined by just this thing that happened. It was, it's mm-hmm. exactly what you said. It was an occurrence. It was an event. I mean, it was pretty impactful, of course. You know what I mean? Like, I, that I don't want to minimize. I would never want to minimize mm-hmm. that. But like you said, I agree that it, it, if anything, and like for me, I will say me personally, it definitely brings up feelings of frustration for the person that did it. You know, like, that's always where my mind goes. I probably need to calm down, because I Honestly, I was in one, I remember I was in one interview and they were like, you know what, but I've come to realize that I have peace and like, I don't get upset. And I agree. Sometimes in the interviews though, I get fired up. I'm like, listen, I think that this still sucks though. And I mean, I never want to get to the point where I'm not reacting to it. You know, I, I do love that I have a reaction. Of course, I want it mm-hmm. to be a, a healthy one and a balanced one, but it does still suck. You know, that there are people out there, unfortunately, that inflict this kind of harm. But agreeably on the other side, I agree mm-hmm. with you though, that absolutely, it does not define who you are. It doesn't like mean your whole life is only about this one thing, but I am glad that it gives you knowledge, right? So like even right now, the fact that it gives you this wealth of experience that you're able to share, but also to help, you know? So it's also not that you're sharing it right now just because you want, like you said, other people to feel sorry for you, but just because it can help you to help others more because you <laughs> understand more than other people can. So that's what I love. And so speaking of that, I love that because you're here on the other side, you spoke a little bit about your healing journey or the period. I, I can tell you're healing, you know, like you use your healing to help others and all of that but I heard counseling and I think um I think that was the only one like so far that I heard at least methods that were used and I think you I heard you say your mother took you you know so and that's what I was going to ask as well so what I'm curious about is what was what were the effective things that help you to heal like what would you say help you know more than others 
and like who helped you to get there so like did you make the decision on your own was it with your mother was it joint how did that go mm-hmm. um so my mom started bringing us to I, I just recently found out that she was bringing us to counseling places they were called what we called play place where we'd go and play and then someone would talk to us that did not help me at, for me it did not help at all but um we finally got into like some where grown-ups would come in and have counseling or like older kids would come in and so I wasn't treated like a child who got traumatized I was treated as a person who got traumatized and I went in and I started cognitive based trauma therapy I think that it was um and I did that whole thing and that my counselor was probably what I want to call the best. Uh, She was basically my saving grace. It was either her or downhill from there because that was when I was still going back and forth. She was my basically my rock other than my mom. um, She was basically my rock I could hold on to because as I was going back and forth I would still see her every Tuesday and I would just keep seeing her every single week. And I, it was amazing to know that there was someone who was always going to be there. Even if you had to pay to see them, they would still be there. And that's better than nothing. So, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think, too, like, you know, there are, you know, people that that's just the talent they have and that may be how they get it. But it is, too, like, I'm sure for her or, you know, who the counselor was, is that, you know, I'm sure they felt so fulfilling that it was kind of like really getting paid for it is just a bonus. It's just something that they, you know, like mm-hmm. to be able to do. And that's the kind of work I also love to do. I'm like, I really do believe that saying that, like, if you find what you love, you really won't work a day in your life. I heard that when I was younger and I was kind of like, eh, okay, maybe that sounds good. But I really believe it now because I'm like, when you really mm-hmm. work, you know, work in your purpose and in your passion, I feel like you really don't feel like it's work. But I think too, like what you said is just that to be the recipient of that kind of support and for it to be, you know, for you to feel that way, like, validated feel seen understood and heard and mm-hmm. you know and all of that I agree I think that that's like phenomenal but then too that you know and you can have it on a consistent basis like you said so you know like you were able to come mm-hmm. and you know be able to do that and receive that so I love that did you go mm-hmm. like for a long period of time do you still go now or like is that something that you know how long you on know? a like as needed basis I remember mm-hmm. before we moved yes uh I was doing EMDR which is basically to describe it in a simple way, you held things in your hands, which would buzz like one here, one here. Right. And then you would, sometimes you'd have headphones on, it'd be like one of each or both. Right. And uh, my, my counselor is amazing for that. Right. Um, and this was like years after the first like set of counseling that helped me. Right. And then I did coffee and cocoa. And then I wanted to come back because one, uh, I wanted to figure out if there was any more I was missing. And another part of that was me thinking I could still save my brother who was with the perpetrator if I found out more and remembered more, that I could do something to help him if I remembered more. Because I disassociate a lot. It's still a problem now, I'm getting better at it. But especially in the traumatizing situations, I would disassociate. So I remember here and there, I just know for a, I know things for facts. Like I've gotten them fact checked multiple times. Like I'll see things like a couch or something and I'll be like, was that there? And my mom will be like, yeah, that was there. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, did he have this? Did he have this? Like trying to make sure I wasn't, just making it up so I could save my brother because I wanted it to be real facts that saved my brother so but I've come to find out that I can't because it is out of my control and I've done the best I can so absolutely and and I think it's, it's definitely an unfortunate reality that that's the case but I think too like you're still doing incredible work you know like here and I feel like you know, if ever given the opportunity, I think that, you know, your, your sibling would definitely be coming back into such a supportive environment. But Mm -hmm. I agree that, you know, I'm glad you're 
I don't know that you're, I mean, it's not like probably complete peace with it, but you know what I mean? You're doing what you can to at least still a fulfilling life. Because I do agree. I do think that unfortunately there are some things that are outside of our control, but I don't, like you said, you can't, I would definitely not think that you, it's not for nothing that you did not try. You know what I mean? That the efforts weren't there and that the efforts weren't genuine either. You know, that's the other thing I think too, like something not something you were forcing or, you know, having an agenda behind, but like legitimately just wanting to help, you know? And so like, and only doing what you could in those moments. So I agree. But like, I also think it's incredible hearing that, you know, that that's what, you know, counseling, all these different methods, like what they've done for you, like just because our minds really are those, but that powerful, you know? And so like, mm -hmm. it's our thoughts, like can really govern our actions actions like they have influence over everything and so like literally how we think really influences a lot of other things mm -hmm. and so I just think it's incredible to hear that like you know it's helped you in those ways but it is cool to know too like you said that like you kind of just go more like on an ad need you know basis there's like other things that you do now that mm -hmm. aren't necessarily rooted in that so I would love to hear more about those things so like I think I heard coffee and cocoa but then mm -hmm. um some of those other things that you do now like what are the other things that are part of your healing because I feel like you know healing is a lifelong journey <laughs> so we're always going to be working on it, but what things work for you now um, that you do? Um, I like being in my own space with my thoughts, kind of figuring it out before I hear someone else's opinion to make sure I know what I feel and think. Right. And then I can hear someone else's and then get feedback on that to help. Like in any situation, it doesn't even have to be about trauma. It could be about anything, mm -hmm. something I think about. And it's just nice to hear another perspective which is like a nice, you're not always in control kind of thing. Your, right. your thoughts aren't always the big ones. Um, but there's also like uh, reading, like reading stuff that like especially hits home with me, like uh, about trauma, about abuse, about a uh, parent leaving, divorce, something that hits home with me. That's where I find most of my, that's, a lot where I find it, um, and especially Coffee at Coco, where I listen to other people's stories and take in how they feel and kind of learn from it. And it's amazing Absolutely. how much I have. So, And that, since we didn't touch on exactly in your bio what Coffee and Coco is, if you don't mind telling the viewers, what exactly is Coffee and Coco? <laughs> what is that? And what does it do for you? Um, well, it's me and my mom, uh, who is Coco, and I'm, or she's coffee, I'm Coco. Yeah. Because I can't stand coffee, yet she drinks it 24-7. She's probably drinking it right now. Um, but uh, we go online and we interview people. We go and talk about tough topics. We go and share awareness and our experiences and especially share our voices about these topics so that others can be informed and know they're not alone. Because one of the things I learned in counseling was that there are other people out there, but I never believed it until I found Coffee and Cocoa. So that is the main thing that we wanna make sure that no one feels alone because this didn't just happen to you. This happened. This happens to most people. The like the statistics are there, and it's the statistics are scary. But uh, we go on. We interview people. We. I love what I do. It. <laughs> we do it in our basement. We have like a little heater running. I have almost caught fire a couple times because I don't know how a heater works apparently. Um, but. It's mostly, we mostly try and keep it upbeat, but there's also times where you have to get serious and like you have to talk gruesome for people to understand. But it's probably one of the most things that bring me healing. It's, oh. it's one of the things that get me, gets me through the week. Like I'll be feeling down because of school one day and then I'll go home and do like a recorded interview that we'll send out on like Friday or Tuesday. And um, and then I'm ready to go face the day back on the next day. It's it's amazing. 
I love Yay. it. I do love that. I agree. And like, where is it that you find the people that you um interview? Is it just, you know what I mean? Like, do you plan that? Or this different certain place that you're going? Where are you finding your interviewees? Um, I think my mom does most of the scheduling. Okay. But from yeah. what I know, she goes out into groups. She asks people. She finds people. And somehow, I have no idea how, she asks them to come on. Because I, I can't imagine myself doing that. But hopefully I can figure out how without being like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to like, like getting scared of their reactions. <laughs> but um, it's from like people she talks to, people who recommend. If it's like an author of a book that she finds, she'll be like, oh, I want to see if I can contact this person to bring them on. Or So she does most scheduling, but. Okay. But you find joy, of course, in doing the interviewing and, you know, mm -hmm. all those things. And that's what I love. So, yeah. what it, Was it your idea to start it? Was it her idea to start it? Like, who started Coffee and Cocoa? Um, well, back in the third grade, I was going in, I was in counseling. I was going back and forth between me and my, my mom and my perpetrator. And I remember leaving a counseling session, going down the road with my mom back home. Um, and I remember telling her, um, I want everyone to have a Miss Rebecca, who was my first, like, counselor I connected with. And um, I want every, everyone to have enough money to go and see a counselor so they can feel as happy as I am. Because I was so ecstatic that day because of counseling. It made me feel, like, so alive. And so uh, seventh or six, seventh or sixth grade, I think it was seventh, somewhere there, um, I was 12, and uh, we just got done with a Matthew West uh, Zoom call. And the next day, my mom's like, okay, so I went to sleep, and this thing came to me, and it was coffee and cocoa. And she started, like, saying where we would share experiences, and I was like, yes, I want to do it. And she's like, are, are you sure? And I'm like, Yeah. She's like, okay, I'm going to give you this little bit to think about. And I'm like, no, I want to do this now kind of thing. It was, it, it sounded amazing. And I'm so glad I saw you, said yes. Absolutely. Yeah, because it was definitely needed. But it was such a great synergy, too, because, of course, basically you presented the idea yourself by saying, you know, everybody should have a Miss Rebecca. And then, you know, I felt like she just followed up on it by saying, OK, well, maybe this is the way to do it. And then, of course, you were like you took it and ran, you know, ran with it. So I think it's like amazing. And it was just a great mm -hmm. you know, marriage of the two ideas. But wow, I'm so glad to hear it. And, like, and it's just so good to hear that with it you're able to do all this great work but like you said mm -hmm. it brings you so much joy to do you know what I mean and it's something because I think you know you brought up a real thing that sometimes it's not this magical thing that just goes away right like our pain just disappears and even as we're working on our healing it mm -hmm. disappears no sometimes it still comes back so it's helpful to have something that like gives us purpose that helps us you know and doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. just distract us but just helps us to redirect the energy is what I would say because yeah. during coffee and cocoa I don't hear that you're ignoring your feelings you know what I mean you're literally Literally, like putting them on you're having honest conversations honestly mm -hmm. really in-depth conversations because like you said you put that positive spin on it but sometimes you're going like beneath the surface you know what I mean and you're really mm -hmm. having to like you said describe it in a way that lands with people but also helps them understand the topic fully so I agree that you know and develops that appreciation for it all the way so I agree I'm glad that you know you have that but then so with that I'm curious like what's your vision like what is your vision for coffee and cocoa in the future is there anything that it's currently doing that you want to continue or that you want to see it do more of in the future or bigger plans just curious um well me I know I want rallies I want like a ball I remember when I was a kid my mom took us to these ballroom dances because her friend worked at a bridal store and she worked she helped out there and um she used to have these big balls where you would dress up all fancy and you'd go and have fun and we were wanting like a coffee and cocoa ball and I still want to do at least one of those because that was just amazing, amazing to like think about and just like imagine what would happen. Um, but I would always want to keep doing the uh, doing lives and pre-recording and doing interviews. It it makes me feel it makes me go back into myself and appreciate myself more. I'm like, I really need to appreciate myself more instead of like getting down on how bad my grades are or 
like, oh, you should do this better. But then I'm like, but look at this now. Look where I am now. And it just makes me reconnect. And yeah. Absolutely. And then like with some people that you're like interviewing and interacting with, now are all of them your age though? I'm assuming since your mom is finding the guests, they're not. So yeah, I'm curious about that piece. Like, do you see yourself as the young person that you are engaging other young people, like taking advantage of that population? Have you started to try to get in that? Just wondering about that part. Um, well, I know most people my age scare me a little bit because <laughs> they're like me and feelings are kind of feelings um it's mostly like people older than me around my mom's age um but I think we we've had like two people on who are like 18 16 in that range and I'm like oh people I know that are open about this and but I do have like my friends at school but it, mostly we bring on people older than me and um I don't usually see myself as the young person in the room until they start bringing up stuff from like the olden days, which I do not get. Um, but um, stuff like stuff like that, I'll be like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about and make fun of them of how old they are. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, I usually feel like we're the same. We, even though we're different ages, I don't feel any different from you. I can connect with you with feelings and experiences, so that's enough. Absolutely. And I definitely don't disagree. I'm just, like, thinking, like, it just would be lovely to see some more young advocates in the world as well. So, like, and I'm hoping that, you know, as they see your work, that they might be inspired to either do similar work or at least join forces with you or all of that. But I do think, like, I agree. I'm glad you said that. But I have to, I can't um, not have this opportunity and not say that. But it is incredible <laughs> that you are, you know, at this age. I mean, you might hear it from others. I don't care. I just want to make sure that I'm also in the lineup of people saying it. It is just incredible, you know? And I just think, like, with all the things that you could be doing with your time, and I'm sure you do. I mean, you you mentioned at the beginning, you do regular things. It's not like you're not a kid. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. all of those things. But for you to still also dedicate it to this effort, and even for your mom to have presented it to you, and for you to have ran with it the way you have, and, like, you know, be all over it and excited about it, dedicated to it, like, I just think, and it's great. I mean, I'm glad it also provides you this positive, you know, influence as well. Like, it's literally this mutually beneficial thing. Like, it brings you positivity, brings mm -hmm. others positivity, and then it's helping, you know, the world at large. But I just think it's still incredible for you to do that because, of course, you didn't have to. You know what I mean? There's all the things that you could be doing, but also just like it is, you know, it's, it isn't something that most young people do. So I think mm -hmm. it's just, you know, I'm awesome that you're doing it um, and all of that. So that's why I'm just, you know, super curious. So great. So then with that, like, what other plan, you know, so other than just with coffee and cocoa, what do you think it lies in the future of, you know, Carly, aka Coco? Like, what is what's in store for you in the future and all of that? What does the future hold? Um, it's kind of scary to think about the future because I've nothing is set in stone. I could wake up tomorrow with both my legs paralyzed and screw all of the dreams for the future up. But um, I know I want to, I want to have a, uh, job in, like, uh, law enforcement, either being a lawyer or being a cop, a cop for, like, I can get to the situation and, like, kind of assess it, like, how I do normally with myself. I can assess it, know how I feel about it, and then get other people's opinions on it, um, or, like, a lawyer to help sexual abuse victims, like, find justice and give them the justice I don't think I'll have um that's also in the future I really and probably won't happen but it's still good to dream that my perpetrator will go to jail um but I feel like a more reasonable kind of still out there goal is being able to see my brother again because he's about to turn 18 but he probably will not come and see but even if he's 40 and I finally get to see him, at least I'll get to see him before nothing bad happens. But um, yeah, I, nothing's really set in stone, but I would, it would be nice to have at least some, some of those points hit. Absolutely. And I think that when it comes to people that go into those, that line of work, 
it's definitely these kind of people that I want to see there. I, this is what I want to see. You know, if it was up to me, we completely eradicate the justice system. We'll have more people that are actually survivors <laughs> so that it could be survivor centered. Like right now, I mean, well, that's the other thing. We don't even use the word survivor. We often use the word victims, you know, and just like the marginalized and all these things. So mm. I just think like, it's obviously because we don't have enough people with the proper perspective, you know what I mean? Who have actually been through it and know like what is needed. So I think, yes, I absolutely encourage you, you know, to do that um, and to add your voice to those who, you know, who are voiceless, you know, and all those things like you do now. But I also think like, I agree definitely with your, um, with your brother as well. Like I appreciate that you shared, you know what I mean? And all that, but I definitely, I have to agree. You know what I mean? I, I hope that one day, whether it's brief or long, you know what I mean? That you are given that opportunity, but also like, it, it would be interesting to know if maybe like, well, especially with everything you're doing, even with this show, for example, if like one day he might actually see it, you know what I mean? Since you know, mm-hmm. you're out on the airways and that at least he's hearing these encouraging messages and knows that he's still loved, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. From afar. And I think sometimes too, that's also the other thing that we want to be able to encourage others is that whether you're with the person or not, like we all deserve encouragement and that's all we're really trying to give, you know what I mean? Others, Mm -hmm. even though we may have been stripped of it, you know what I mean? That we've been through some painful things. We still, you know, love others, you know, I want to be able to help them even love them basically like with all the pieces of our heart that might be broken. Like we still have all those pieces still here ready to love Mm -hmm. others with. So I think that's wonderful. Um, And I heard like, uh, last thing I wanted to ask, I had heard a couple heroes, in your life, I feel like in positive influences. I heard your mom, I heard Miss Rebecca, but are there any other like positive influences that you have, role models? Because again, like you're already inspiring yourself, but just like, you know, who else inspires you, other role models, things of that nature? Um, I know a couple people like uh, my EMDR counselor, Tracy Gilreath, who we had on the show. And he is amazing, even though he roots for the worst team. Um, and not Michigan, which I'm kind of mad about, but we can get over that. Um, and then we have uh, Janet Taylor from Parents Never Get Up, Give Up. Um, she is one of my biggest people I look up to because she has been through some of the things I have and gives a lot of wisdom on it. And so those are just to name a few. I know there's also my uh, neighbor, my old neighbor, Um, and she was, back when I first started uh, with Miss Rebecca, um, she was there from beginning to end to help, which was a big relief to have someone other than my mom that I could talk to. Absolutely. And those are just to name a few. There's more, but those are the first people that come to mind. And on the flip side, are, is there anyone that maybe you haven't met in life yet that like you haven't worked with, hasn't had influence on you that you hope to meet or work with in the future now that you're doing this kind of work? Any people like that? Um, I kind of don't set my sights for that. I don't okay. like look for that because I'm scared of the disappointment, but okay. I also know it might never happen. So it's just kind of how I feel. But sometimes I'll be in my head. I'm like, oh, I really wish I could talk to this person and know what they feel. Right. But there's no one, like, specific that I know of okay. uh, off the top of my head. I'd have to think about it more. But there are definitely people I'd like to talk to, even if it's, like, not interviewing, but just talk to and, like, know their experiences and how they got here today. Exactly. So. Right. Just to learn from them. Exactly. Just to have that. Mm-hmm. Just to make the connection. So, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, but I agree. I'm definitely a big one. And I'm, I love how I'm always like, yeah, give me constructive criticism. But then I'll, like, beat myself up afterward. So, like, we're all human. Like, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, but here we go with our conflict. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So, with that being said, I mean, it's literally been nothing but, like I said, nothing but an honor and pleasure having you on. I think the only other thing I would love for you to share with viewers is, you know, if they want to get to know you more, like, connect with you, you know what I mean? If anything has resonated with them, um, how can they find you? How can they connect with you, help you out, all that? Um, So, we uh, are, me and my mom, uh, are Coffee and Coco, are on Facebook. We, I'm pretty sure we go live Friday and Tuesday. Or send out pre-records or go put something out there, at least on those days. Um, and that's Coffee and Coco on Facebook or at Voices of Coffee and Coco, I'm pretty sure. Um, then we also have the TWC Clubhouse, which I am not fully on yet. That is more of my mom, like, with her book clubs and stuff, which 
I love when she just comes out and she's like, she's so excited. I'm like, this is so cool to watch her get so excited like a child. It's just so funny to watch. But um, yeah, so I haven't really branched out to more like social media because I don't really use social media myself. The only real one I use is YouTube, you, ugh, YouTube or uh, Snapchat. Those are the only two I use. And those are more for personal stuff and not really Coffee and Cocoa. But I, in the future, I plan to get better with it and put myself out there on like TikTok or Instagram to help others. But that's all it is right now, Facebook. So, cool. but there we go too. So there goes another goal. So in the future, there will probably be more pages dedicated to you, more stuff. <laughs> you know, we go manifest it that that's what a Wikipedia happen. page. You know? Exactly, it's going to be out here, right? Influencer vibes, but yes. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that that's awesome. I think it's awesome that you have mm -hmm. that now. I love Facebook, so hopefully others do too. Um, I definitely think it's a great place already. But also, it is wonderful that you have those other places that people can tap into. So any other closing thoughts, any inspiring words, anything else you want to share? Um, I guess just if you are in the moment where it's between the downside of whatever that could be or speaking out and getting shut down, speak out and get shut down because at least you tried and you can you're in and then you're back in that moment where you're like okay I could go downhill or I could try again and you try again and you keep going even if you're put down even if you're not believed even if you're said you're a liar or you're making all this up or it, even when you know you're not don't let yourself go through that dark tunnel because that just puts you further in the dark, away from the light. Well, as you keep trying, it gets you closer to the light. Even if it still seems dark and it seems like it's getting darker, that going down that tunnel will eventually get you to the light or to a brighter side of things. And soon enough, you will find that one person who believes you and will help you. And to be honest, you'll be able to say, I don't give two craps about the other people who didn't help me because I found this person who does believe me and makes me feel like a like I should be here. Absolutely. Oh, yes. I totally agree. I was like literally in there. I was like literally picturing it. I was just but I um, but I, I, I definitely I totally and wholeheartedly agree with that. And I just feel that that's and, and that's why I think it's also just something. The only other part I want to emphasize about it is that and you're hearing this again from someone who is still in the midst of their life. You know what I mean? Like developing with it. And like, I think you're just such an incredible example of clearly like there could be more to life. Like you said, like you started off saying that and clearly you're still in the midst of doing that so I just think like there's clearly no wrong or right time you know what I mean whenever you're ready is when you should come forward you know and hopefully yes hopefully you are met with the proper support but even if you're not like you said it's worth taking that risk to at least try to at least put yourself out there and to hopefully eventually put yourself on that path to finding the right support that you need but also to get yourself to a better life that you deserve you know so like that you definitely deserve to have and I'm glad that you reclaimed your life at you know like um I mean you did it before now before 14 but but at the tender age of 14, you're still doing it. You know what I mean? You're still claiming your life. You're still doing all these great things. You're showing us that you can live a wonderful and bountiful life. Um, but at the same time, yeah, you're also reminding us that, you know, that's why, you know, you will write your own timeline, write your own story. So I totally agree. So thank you very much with that, Miss Ma'am. So yeah, so thank you, Carly, aka Coco, um, for coming on today. Thank you so much. Um, I'm actually going to be seeing you with your mother also, and I actually had a chance to also uh, interview your mother. So of course, viewers, if you have not had a chance, you're going to have all the trifecta. There is the mom. We've uh, interviewed Carly, but we're also going to have uh, co the Coffee and Coco duo. So y'all got to check it all out. Okay, just check it all out. Period. <laughs> And then definitely <laughs> put them on the Facebook page, mm -hmm. find them um, wherever you can, and, uh, and you know, definitely uh, tune in. So thank you again. Appreciate it. No problem. I enjoyed it. So. Yay.